Good morning, and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev. And baby, it's a marvelous Monday. Yes, it is. We got our bags packed. Mm -hmm. We had a sensational Sunday night at the yes, International Center. With our precious, amazing, bold yes. friend. Great friend. Pastor Robert Slaird. Amen. And his team, his family, his mom. It was a great time. And the devil, God was glorified and the devil terrified. That's exactly right. And we got to see our friend Lejeune. Yes. And we've seen our friends Laurel and Randy this yes, week. Yes, we have. We, hey, yay. That's a great, great, great time. Yes, it is. You know, we want to share. I think we did it recently. We're going to do it again. We want to share with you Deuteronomy 15, verses 4 and 5, classic Amplified Bible. But there were no poor among you. Okay, listen to this passage. But there were, were, will be no poor among you, for the Lord will surely bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance to possess. If only you carefully listen to the voice of the Lord your God to do watchfully all these commandments which I command you this day. Wow. That's a great verse. It's a great verse. And that, there's seven keys found in those two verses, honey. First, there will be no poor among you. That's amazing. You know, yesterday's call, we discussed this portion of Scripture in detail. So we just want to share a few highlights. That's right. Psalm 84, 11, 84, 11, classic Amplified Bible. For the Lord, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. I love mm, this. I do too. The Lord bestows present grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing would he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. I think we can all agree that poverty is not a good thing. Poverty happens inside you before it happens around you. Poverty will not keep you out of heaven, but it may keep others out if we don't give to the work of the gospel. That's true. We pointed out that poverty is the devil's anointing. It'll steal your dreams while robbing you of your good life that God intended for you. And poverty definitely is not a good thing. Having all your bills paid, now that is a good thing. Being able to finance the Great Commission is a good thing. Caring for the widows and orphans, a good thing. Amen. Walking in surplus with every need met is a good thing. Hallelujah. Being generous to others so they will glorify God is a good thing. God gave his best, Jesus, so truly he was not withholding any good thing from us. Hallelujah. Romans. I'm, yeah, I love Romans. 832. In the New, New King James Version. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That is, that is such a great scripture and the one before it. But second, the Lord will bless you. The context of this phrase is that God will bless the children of Israel and then the land he has promised them. If God promises you something, land for that, or for that matter anything else, it becomes holy. The legendary Bill Gaither made a very famous song, Standing on Holy Ground, which was made, him, made it famous, and it's a song written by Jaron Davis. You know, I love this song. It is. Go ahead, babe. When I walked through the doors, I sensed his presence, and I knew this was a place where love abounds. For this is a temple that God we love abides. Oh, we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Amen. We're standing on holy ground. For I know there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now, for we're standing in his presence on holy ground. Wherever you are, when you're in God's presence, you are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah. And he's promised, he promises us great things. Plus, God has given his angels charge over us. So whenever we are praising Jesus, we are standing on holy ground. Third, God has given you an inheritance to possess. Mm. Isaiah 54, 17. 54, 17 says... 
No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of, is of me, saith the Lord. Now, according to Strong's Recordance, the Hebrew word for heritage is H5159, 5159. And it means possessions, property, inheritance, heritage. So we're talking about much more than a spiritual heritage. We're talking financial. The word for heritage in Strong's Concordance is H5159, as we said. And in the King James Version of the Bible, it's mentioned a total of 222 times in 191 verses. In 191 of those verses, it's translated as inheritance. Amen. And hallelujah. You know, honey, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's it. Right? Right. All we have to do is reach out. I love this. Reach out and accept what is already ours in the spirit. Mm. It just needs to manifest in the natural. That's right. Fourth, if only. And see, that's from the verses. That's right. This is all taken from that Deuteronomy scripture. Fourth, if only. A few days ago, about we shared a teaching of on if and if only. Remember yeah. that? It was also in the last, uh, I guess the last, somewhat around the last, anyway, in one of the Rich Thoughts emails. Make sure to check it out, though. You can and by the way, if you're not getting that Rich Thoughts email, you go to the website, heraldherring.com, and sign up. That's Sorry. right. And then you could go to the blogs and just put in if and if only, and it'll draw it up. Yeah, pull it up. That's it. Proverbs 5, 12 through 14. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 12 through 14 in the Living Bible says, And you say, Oh, if only I had listened, if only I had not demanded my own way. Oh, why would I take advice? Why would I be so stupid? For now I must face public disgrace. One of the biggest problems is that we get ourselves in trouble, and yes, even sin by demanding to do things our way. We sometimes have this, it's all about me kind of attitude. However, in Deuteronomy 15, 5, Deuteronomy 15, verse 5, it says, if only we listen to the word of the Lord and obey his commandments, the things will be different in our lives. Absolutely. And that's so true. Fifth, you listen to his voice. Now, there are many voices in your life waiting for you to listen to them, take their advice, do what they suggest, or suddenly tell you what to do. If I know who you listen to, I know where you'll end up in life. Amen. Micah 7, 7, Micah 7, 7, Message Bible. But me, I'm not giving up. I'm sticking around to see what God will do. I'm waiting for God to make things right. I'm counting on God to listen to me. You don't have to wonder about that. Scripture says God not only listens, but he answers. Hallelujah. And God will listen to us as we listen to him, right? That's honey? right. Sixth, do all his commandments. You know, would you like a good reason to do all his commandments? We can actually give you several scriptural answers to this question. But let's just get, we want to just give you this one this morning. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2 in the classic Amplified Bible. If you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord your God. For us, that's a wow revelation the reality of which we can experience if we obey what the Lord is telling us in even now a better covenant that's in exactly, the New Testament. That's exactly Amen. right. Seventh, which he will give you this day. Psalm 35, 27. Psalm 35, 27. Hallelujah. Let them, oh, I love this. I know it. 
Let them shout for joy and be glad. I can preach this. That favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. We strongly recommend you personalize that scripture. Hallelujah. Let Pastor Helen shout for joy and be glad. He favors my righteous cause. Let him say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of Pastor Helen, his servant. Clearly, God wants your bills paid, your needs met, your family blessed. Amen. Psalm 8411, 8411 classic amplified. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Mm -hmm. We'll read it again because I love it. In the Amplified In this Amplified. Time. The Lord blesses, bestows present great grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing, no good thing will he withhold from Larry and Gina who woke up rightly. Amen. No good thing will he withhold. Hallelujah. From Maya who walks up rightly. Personalize it. You know, God's word translation of that scripture says, he does not hold back any blessing. Mm. Wow. De Deuteronomy 28, 11, and 12. 28, 11, and 12. And the Lord shall make you have a, oh, here we go, a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and through your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. It's called pressing the word. That's exactly right. The Lord will make you have a surplus of prosperity. Put him in remembrance. Put not, him in remembrance. Not a government check, said. and not even an inheritance from a rich relative. The scripture doesn't say that he'll give surplus of poverty. That's right. He'll give you a surplus of prosperity. This verse shows a variety of ways in which God can get money to us. Why is he blessing us so? You know why? He promised our forefathers. In the scripture, remember, we are the seed of Abraham. It says, the Lord shall open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give you the rain of your land in its season, and to bless all the works of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, and you shall not borrow. There's no question. God wants to turn our poverty and lack into prosperity. But we need to point out that we play a significant role in the effectiveness of our turnaround specialists. Mark 115, 115 Classic Amplify. And saying the appointed period of time is fulfilled, completed, and the kingdom of God is in hand. Repent. Have a change of mind which issues in regret for the past sins and in change of conduct for the better. And believe, trust in, rely on, and adhere to the good news, the gospel. Mark 115, 115 Message Bible. He said, the time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Change the way you think, act, and believe the good news. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. 3, 5 and 6. New International Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. It's time for your turn, turn around, around to begin. Amen. Hallelujah. A few more months this year in this year and we can turn it all around and have the best year ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out to my mom who pinch hit for us last night on Sunday Night Live. Amen. She and dad did a great job. Well, Let's get in the car and go home. That's it. The palm trees are swinging and the breeze is nice, but it's time to head head north. Absolutely. If you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldhearing.com at the top where it says, Soil Seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you put in the ground. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.